Hello and good afternoon, everyone. We are delighted to welcome you to today's class on Yamamoto New Scalp Acupuncture. We're excited to explore this fascinating technique with you and uncover its powerful applications. How many of you already practice Yamamoto New Scalp Acupuncture? Please type in yes in the chat room. This gives our speaker an idea of how many people are familiar with this topic. Now, how many of you are new to scalp acupuncture in general, no matter what style? Please type in new in the chat room. My name is Myra Chen, and I'm your host and moderator for today's eLotus webinar. Here at eLotus, we have been hosting educational courses for over three decades, and we are so proud to be your trusted source for premium CEU content with over 200 speakers, 700 courses, and 3,000 hours of CE. We appreciate you all being here with us today. Today's webinar is Yamamoto New Scalp Acupuncture Part 2 with Dr. Tzu Chen Kao, sponsored by Evergreen Herbs. Please allow me to introduce our distinguished speaker, Dr. Tzu Chen Kao. Dr. Kao brings a wealth of expertise and experience to his practice. With a university degree in Chinese medicine from China Medical University and a master's degree in healthcare administration from Taipei Medical University, Dr. Kao has demonstrated a commitment to both the art and science of healing. In addition to his extensive clinical practice, he serves as the chairman of the Yamamoto New Scalp Acupuncture Taiwan branch and holds visiting staff positions at several prestigious clinics showcasing his dedication to advancing acupuncture techniques and patient care. This is the second part of the two-part class. The Yamamoto New Scalp Acupuncture was developed by Dr. Toshikatsu Yamamoto in 1973, utilizing somatotypes rather than traditional acupuncture points, revolutionizing the therapeutic approach. Get ready to learn all about Yamamoto New Scalp Acupuncture and effectively treat pain, neurological diseases, the locomotor system, and facial systems. For those curious about learning more about scalp acupuncture, please be sure to check out our core access page on our website. Here you'll find Thai scalp acupuncture among many other resources. Core is an exclusive section packed with valuable information and courses. Gold Pass members have the premium access to Thai Scalp Acupuncture section, which includes detailed and exclusive content on scalp acupuncture techniques and additional resources. If you're not a member yet, consider joining to take advantage of numerous sponsored benefits and access to over 2,000 hours of recorded videos from our library, covering the past 20 years of invaluable content. I'll post the link to our core page below for you to check out Thai Scalp Acupuncture, Master Dong Points, Auricular Acupuncture, Abdominal Acupuncture, and more. For our new attendees joining us, let me familiarize you with our webinar room. Please set your chat from host and panelist to everyone. That way everyone can be part of the conversation. To ask questions during the webinar, use the Q&A box so that they remain separate from the chat room. And lastly, the quiz. The quiz for CEUs will be available the next business day late afternoon for everyone with qualifying attendance. Now, let's get started with today's webinar and welcome Dr. Tzu Chen Kao. Very cool afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Gao. Uh, nice to see you again. Okay, let me just share about the slide. Okay. okay, can everyone hear my voice and see my slide? Okay, nice to meet you online again. Uh, welcome to the second part of YC Lectures. We have already finished the first part of YC Lecture. In the following section, I would like to present the latest somatos and the diagnosis methods. And since you might find out, the lecture sounds a little bit challenging. I strongly suggest that you need to review what you learned in the first part of YSA lectures and be skilled in YSA 
uh, practice before joining this part of the lectures. And if we have a free time, I will introduce the case reports by Dr. Yamamoto before uh, yesterday because we don't have a time to share yesterday. So today's content is not very difficult, but I will share lots about case reports and the treatment experiences today. So if you have any questions, just uh, tell me. Thanks so much. Okay, now let me introduce the outline. First, I will introduce the changes of somatose for seven years. Second, I will introduce the somatose that I learned in 2018. Third, I will introduce Dr. Yamamoto's preference in somatose in 2018. And finally, I will introduce the, his correction and the preference in diagnosis method. Okay. Uh, Dr. Yamamoto didn't explain the reason why he deleted some somatose. In my opinion, I, uh, Dr. Yamamoto thought that the point didn't work very well. Therefore, he deleted them. However, I suggest you to have to keep the deleted points in your mind. Okay. First, if the young point was deleted, as you can see, the handout here. Okay, so, sorry, I maybe let me show the laser paint. The handout here uh, deleted the D points here, but in that textbook, it still existed. And the left graph is the old version, and right graph shows a new version. Oh, sorry, sir, wrong. Uh, I made got a mistake. This this is the new version and this is the old version. But I think you still have to keep in mind. In addition, uh, isomatose have been updated. As you learn that the left graph is the old version we taught before, right? And the right graph indicates the new version. We'll compare the left graph and the right graph. It is obvious that the width of the upper limb and lower limb becomes wider in 2016. But I think it, you don't need to mem uh, memorize very well because Dr. Yamamoto sometimes change the graph every time. So I think if you want to find tender point here, just follow your thumb, which I have taught before, right? About how to find a tender point on the scalp, you have to use the thumb and the nail here, use the muscle, the, the edge of muscle and nail on your thumb and try to touch the patient's skin. After you find out the, ten the tender point, you can do the acupuncture. But how do I do find the patient's, uh, pa patient's skin? Uh, what are the point we have to acupuncture? Uh, I've told you that. If you want to find here, you will find some soft tissue, soft, uh, soft bulge, bulge or a soft skin on the patient's head on the skin, uh, on the scalp, and then when you touch it, the patients feel a sharp pain. This is the correct somatope. This is what we taught yesterday, right? Okay. Uh, this is because isomatope is a little bit complicated. So you have to, when you want to acupuncture here, upper limb and lower limb, you have to find the tender point which you want to do and by this method. Now, Let's introduce the new tinnitus point. It is the most important here in the new, new somatopes in 2018. The new tinnitus, uh, the new spine points is very important. That were discovered in 2017. There are two vertical axes on the face. First, let's look at the internal axis. The internal axis uh, is, the width of internal axis is equal to a point. And the distance of first ac internal axis and the sagittal plane is about one centimeters. It is also equal to the width of A point and the sagittal line. And then lumbar, lumbar points is on the top. This one is thoracic point. And then cervical point is in on the bottom. The distance between these points are almost the same. Okay, the next one is lateral axis. The width between the lateral axis uh, is and the sagittal line is two centimeters. The distance of the lateral axis is equal to the B point, 
and the higher uh, higher of lumbar pain uh, lumbar point this one is also the lumbar point and this one is thoracic point this one is cervical point the lumbar point here is on the median life of internal axis about lumbar point and thoracic point okay this is this lumbar point is in on the median line of lumbar point and thoracic point and this, this thoracic point is on the median line of thoracic point and cervical point and last one the lateral cervical uh, lateral cervical point is just above uh sorry and just take a moment i just see that uh, just think, let me think about how to explain here okay and the lateral cervical uh, cervical point is just above the eyebrow above, and above e point okay uh, sorry for the late for the late explanation let me check again first you have to find two axes here the internal axis and external axis the internal axis is the width of internal axis is equal to a1 and the sagittal plane is about one centimeter and then the lateral axis and sagittal line, the distance of them is two centimeters. Okay, after we find two vertical axes above the points, above the upper points represent lumbar, middle points represent thoracic, lower points represent cervical. And the distance of them are almost the same. These are, these are the same, and these points are the same. And the lateral axis about lumbar point is in the median line of this lumbar and thoracic. And this thoracic point is on the median line of thoracic and cervical. And this cervical, uh, this cervical point is just above the eyebrow. Okay, uh, the points on inter internal vertical axis will overlap with the sensory points, which sensory point is eye point, nose point, and mouth point. In fact, Dr. Yamoto did tell us how to think, how to distinguish the new spine point from sensory points. So you have to tell them apart by your finger. 